Okay, so, happy Wednesday. Mother's Day edition. Let me continue on with uh, the Pyrene. This is a new faction that came out last week because they did an update to the game. Bug fit, fixes, that kind of stuff. They also added the new nation slash faction. Uh, they're basically um, half demons for the most part. Very... Eh, no, nah, vampire is not the right word. But anyway, Pyrenees. So we're currently summer in year three. Proclamation from Ulm, but don't care. It's just a new prophet. One of these crippled units died on the march. There was a battle on Twin Titan's Breath Peaks. Mm, should we start here? We'll come back to this. Let's uh, look at our stuff first. We got a lot of research going on. We made a lot of progress, I think, so far. We got a number of turns done last week, it looks like. But anyway. Uh, these are our research people. They are all priests. Priests in this faction are mages as well. They've got one level of priest, and they also come with one level of blood magics. Or So that's how they work. Um, they're fire resistant, because again, they're kind of like... they got a lot of demon blood in them. But again, these are one of the lower tier uh, units that you can recruit. And here we go. So regular units, uh, we've got crossbowmen, who are okay. What's funny is that we have uh, access to regular human crossbows in other regions here that have better armor. <laughs> They're basically better, <laughs> except for the fire and cold-resistant parts <laughs> and the dark vision. But... Um, they're just more durable because they're they're walking around in plate, I think. So anyway, so those guys, the crossbows, spearmen, same general idea, nothing super special. And again, this is late age. Forgot to say that this is late age faction only. Um, so you got iron, so they get decent armor for those kind of units. And then we got footmen, broadsword, chainmail, kite shield, that kind of stuff. So basic, not too horrible. Get men at arms. These are the upgraded version of the, of the swordsmen. There, you got a broadsword, slightly better armor, They're just generally better. And these guys can be used as bodyguards. So, what this means is now these of this ability is added to morale when guarding a commander during assassination unit. During assassinations, units with this ability will have an increased chance of being present, and if they present, uh, they are also less likely to be asleep or surprised. The same value of this ability and the assassin ability will cancel each other out. So, most assassins start at level 1, so your bodyguards should be there on a regular basis, hence bodyguards, men-at-arms. It's not a bad unit. And then we have the swordsmen. These are basically similar to the, very similar to the men at arms. I mean, difference is their great sword um, for better damage, but I think their protection is about the same. 15 and 15? 15 and 15. So protection levels are, are basically the same. These guys just have a shield. They don't. But again, great sword. So more damage. And they're supposed to be able to take out cavalry too because of that. Mainly because it's the upper, higher damage. Or just more heavily armored units get smacked around. A little bit better. So that's them. And then we have the Purian Knights. Um, standard cavalry. It's heavy cavalry, I guess. Technically. Chainmail, helmet, guide shield. So they're okay. But... In reality, you're going to want to go after the Cambion Knights because these are your sacred units, so they get all your nice little blessings going on inside your Dominion. And uh, they're not too bad. So Skilled Riders, Dark Vision. Oh yeah, they're demons. They're vulnerable to the prayer of the powerful priest, but they are not affected by spells that only target undead, such as Wither Bones. All demons have perfect Dark Vision. Uh, they get the resistances, and of course, like I said, they're sacred. So these are going to be your your big army units for the most part. And as far as leadership goes, uh, we've got a scout. Uh, basically just a melee guy here, nothing special. And here's your Marquess. Um, so nothing special here either, just a cavalry commander. 
And now these guys should all be sacred units. Yeah. All the following units should be sacred. So this is the priest we're mainly just using for research purposes. Why? Because they're cheap and expensive. And for the price of like two of them, you get um, a bishop. And you get, so you get 14 research instead of 11. I mean, they're not as good spellcasters, but you really don't care. They're just doing research. So who cares? <laughs> so, but Bishop is sacred, of course. Then with the Cambian Count. So this is uh, another uh, mounted uh, commander. A little bit of spellcasting, not too much. One glamour, one blood. Sacred, of course. Get an inspirational, so they lead more troops. Demon. All these guys are demons. And they're blood searchers. Blood searchers is, um, we'll go over that in a second. Then we have the Campion Countess. Basically, another. Uh, is she just a spellcaster? It's so a blood, a random, either another glamour, another blood, or fire, earth, or nature, possibly. Small chance, but it's there. Again, sacred, some decent uh, research, demon, 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 good later here with inspirational, soul searcher, and then adept crossbreeder. We're going to do that in a second, too. So you got that. And then we have the Cambian Queen. This is uh, basically tied for the highest uh, tier unit, highest uh, tier commanders. Um, two glamour, three blood, a random, same as the other ones, but uh, one extra chance of getting blood there. Uh, inspirational leader, of course. Again, better... No, no, it's not a better bullet searcher. But add up crossbreeder. There we go. Add up, up to five. And then the Cambian King. So, spellcaster as well. Basically the same spellcasting abilities as the Queen. The main difference is that uh, he is on a big goat to kill stuff. But you can see no cross thing. Only the females can do the cross research stuff or whatever it's called. What is it? Crossbreeder. That's a level five. So what's crossbreeder? Crossbreeder is they cast a spell. Dun dun dun. What spell would that be? That was a blood spell. It is level two. That was level two. Blood, bind, bind, fiend. Oh, there it is. Level three. So you have to have nature, actually. You have to have blood and nature in order to actually grab the crossbreeding spell. And it requires 15 uh, spells, or blood slaves. Let's get to those in a second. And what it does is it takes <laughs> hundreds of different creatures from mice to men to humans are magically crossbred and grown into a, in an effort to produce a powerful monster. Most offspring die early, but some survive and are bound to serve their creator. Luck is required to breed the more powerful creatures. So the higher level of crossbreeding a character has, like the queen does, the better creatures you get. Basically, for those 15 blood slaves, you get 30 plus, or 30 approximately, creatures to join your army. And there are varying qualities. Um, we have a group, don't we? Stop it. Seeing it's over here. Where's our main army? Main army's over here. So, I forget who's uh, leading it. Ah, there we go. So, we did one batch so far. And the only survivor we have left is this thing. Which is a grotesque. And what does he do? Um, he's shock resistant. He's fire resistant. He's poison resistant. He's cold blooded. Mount Survival. Forest Survival. He's unsurroundable, meaning that um, he gets better defenses when he's surrounded. Or it takes more people to surround him for it to be counted as being surrounded. That's what the two means. And he's got some experience. He's got a big stinger with a range of two. Does 24 damage. He's got a claw. Melee stuff, 24 damage. And then he breathes fire like a dragon does for... 18 fire and magic damage. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is uh, one of the the better things you get out of doing the crossbreeding. All the other stuff is dead. We had like 20 some odd 
mutated things. Some of them were a cross between spiders and people and um, other things had tentacles like this guy does. But again, they, were, they weren't as good because that's why they're dead. And basically what we do is we, well, what we did is we threw them all in the same group as he, as him. And then, actually, no, he's in his own, own group. They were in a separate group. And we put out in front of the army. Oh, there they are, actually, right here. I mean, they're not all dead yet. We got nine left. So this is what they are. So at foul spawn, this one does life drain up close. This one's got three tentacles to play around with. This one's only got two tentacles. You see the little images change, too. And this one only has two tentacles, too. So... And like I said, there were, we had a spider mutated one, or at least had spider parts and through webs, and it, it's kind of funny. But uh, we'll we'll create some more as we go. Oh, and then we also have uh, Fenny, Fenny the succubus, the red mistress. Supposedly, the story is this is the first succubus that the the faction rec uh, summoned way back when, and she knocked on her door not too many turns ago, and now is a uh, you know part of the army. And she's really good at the whole uh, at a crossbreeding. As you can see, there's ten instead of a, the queen's only at five. Only females can do the crossbreeding. You figure it out. And anyway, so really good at creating those things. And she has the required uh, one level of nature because you need blood, blood uh, spell or sp blood ma magic and one level of nature magic in order to make the crossbreeding stuff. So that's what Fenny does. Dream seduction. She can do people or seduce commanders in their dreams type deal. Is unseen, so it can fly. So basically, a succubus, a souped-up succubus. Really, we don't have any others, do we? I think that's the only succubus we have in our armies. We should change that. And the rest of our army, of course, is Vukul's our glorious leader, the ever dying Moloch. He's a demon. This game needs more demon selections for the gods. Moloch is not enough. We need more variations in our demons. There's too many goody goodies. We need more demons and devils and stuff for uh, gods. Sorry, potential gods. That's what the whole purpose of the game is. You're competing against other pretender gods to become the real god. Havukruels has got three levels of fire mage, eight of blood mage. You can do research. Because fear, and this is a this is a, an interesting thing with uh, Vukruels is. We're trying to decide what he's really good at. Should he be a melee, melee leading leader, or should he be a fly up in the air and trounce the, bat, the leadership in the background? Both have their strengths, and he can do both well. So the question is, what are we going to do? And mainly the fear thing is good because, you know, when he's with the, the main melee force for our army he gets in there and mixes it up and his fear aura does wonders to the enemy as well as his aura is awe you know makes it harder than for them to hit him hey Vukruls, welcome back we're talking about you so these two combined it just makes him really strong in melee plus he's got these claws that do 21 damage so it's pretty good and then he doesn't even have any real gear on actually his awe is coming from the gosmer gown uh, at some point, once we get really good magic items, we may swap out the, you know, give him a magic item or two to replace one of the claws. Yes, you're still alive. Yes. Well, the chance of you, if you don't actually die in this game, you you can die, but you get to come back because you're the god or pretender god. So anyway, good fire resistance. Okay, cold resistance. Doesn't need to eat. He does a heat. He generates heat. He's more intense in hot lands and weaker in cold lands. The heat effect is usually nullified underwater, but blah, blah, blah. So he radiates heat, whatever that's good for. And of course, he's a pretender god. He can fly. He's a demon. Got wasteland survival. Got their dark vision 100. Inspirational. Ambidextrous, so he can, you know, wield weapons in both hands if he wants to get away from the claws. I'm guessing that's related to the claws, too. And then a combat caster, so what this means is he can ca cast spells while he's engaged in melee combat without re any real penalty. And then he also brings in a, a little group of uh, imps. 3d6 three three imps on his side at the start of each battle. So 
which is useful because they what they do is they fly up and you know cause trouble like imps do. So that's our glorious leader Vuk rules. Uh, let's done of note here. We were talking about Fanning. Tippies are Cambian King, lead in the cavalry for the most part. We need more of these uh Cambian knights, that's for sure. And of course there's that. And Alan Alson Ail Sendees. Ail Sendees is a Gambian queen, and her main job in the group is to uh, pick out the, the the blood slaves when we conquer territories. Why do you do that? Because you need blood slaves to power your blood slave or your blood magic. So you have to, you know, pick up these blood slaves from time to time. What's a blood slave? A young girl. <sighs> that's what they are. So that's where we are, as far as that goes. Oh yeah, the actual map. We made the mistake of uh, walking outside of our dominion, so we need to establish this. Searching, building temple, searching, 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 and blood hunt is picking up the, the blood slaves. Everybody else is looking for magic sites and going from there. This is our actual capital. That's where all the researchers are. Garrow or Jero is um, main defense there. So many priests. So this guy's just a just a regular Castellan, so he's nothing special. He's our main defender here. So there. How much money do we have? Nineteen hundred. Are we recruiting stuff? We are recruiting troops. Okay. Can't be in Countess. Why are we recruiting one of you? Why am I recruiting one of you? I don't remember why I'm recruiting her. I need to write this stuff down. Anyway, throw another priest in there if we get that. Okay, so there's that. Uh, as far as research is going, we're currently working on construction uh, level 5, I think. Yeah, level 5, and that's to get us the... Um, the greater magic items. Hopefully we can get some decent weapons um, and maybe get one or two of those over to uh, Vukrul so we can do more than just claw stuff. And then after we do that... Oh, that's going to be done this turn. We need to work on something else. More blood magic? What do we get at level 6? We're at the Pazuzu. That's an air demon. Or devil. Hellbind heart. Caster binds an enemy soul to a service. Blood Slaves required one. It's a charm. Hmm. Oh, no, sorry. That stuff I already have. Ah, uh, Rejuvenate. The mage drenches himself in the blood of ten young girls in an attempt to become younger. Each offered girl will make the caster one year younger. <laughs> soul Transaction. Caster tries to buy the soul and servitude of the target with the promise to protect him from his former masters. If the persuasion is successful, the target is granted invisibility by infernal forces as he tries to leave battle. If he is successfully if he successfully leaves the battle, he will join the, his new master. The spell is difficult to resist magically, but those of strong morals uh, are rarely affected. That's a good one. Oh, and harm. You know, that's going to hurt things. Spell causes severe damage to the victim's chests and stomachs. The unfortunate victim will start to cough up blood and will most likely never fail, fully recover from the harm done to them. Inanimate, inanimate beings are immune. So blood right, need death magic for that. Blood rain. Blood pours down on the battlefield, lowering everyone's morale. Continually target all enemies with the with frightened one. Maximize. So that'll make them feel good. Ooh, water. Find an ice devil. Call a horror. Yeah, that's always safe. I don't think we have anybody with that much astral magic, though. Infernal disease, ritual of five gates. What's this do? Demonologist inscribes a pentagram on the floor of his summoning chamber and opens a gate in each point of the star. Five fiends from five infernal realms into this world simultaneously in an attempt to prevent forces from the other gates from inter emerging. Trapped by the pentagram, all five are bound by the demonologist for a lifetime and a day. 
So that's a ritual. Hmm. The demons are devils. Fiends. Hmm. It might not be too bad. Bind an arch devil. There we go. Luke will be able to do that. He's got the fire magic to do it. It's a lot of slaves. Got to get working on those slaves. Okay, definitely going to be doing more blood magic, I think. Go all the way to nine. Oh, which one do we want to do? Bind a demon lord, of course. So this would be a Vukrul's thing. I mean, it requires a lot of blood, but a lot of blood level, or blood slaves and blood levels. That's what, it's eight, nine? Somewhere up there? Bind a demon lord. There are but a few of these infernal rulers and their powers are shrouded in mystery. I count nine. It's hard to see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, it's only seven. So that's something wrong with Bucros can do. Hey, Skyward, welcome back. We're definitely going to do this demon lord. Because why wouldn't you? It's a lot of resource for it, so... Oh, wow, that's actually... That's just 1,300 just to get it to level 6. Hmm. So that's going to be 5, 6 turns to do that, and then it's going higher and higher, so we're going to have to keep producing more and more research to go along with all the blood slaves we're going to need. Um... Not do this quite. I don't think we're quite ready for that. What was the, well, there was something good on level six though, wasn't there? Soul transaction, every juvenile, and harm, and blood rain, and the five gates. Actually, that sounds pretty good. So do level six, and we'll go from there. Okay. So there's that. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, we're currently at war with... Well, are we at war with... No, we're not at war with anybody, are we? Pretenders of the world. So we added more pretenders than normal. Apprehensive with Herm and Bond Beneath, whatever. So not actually at war with anybody. They're just apprehensive because we share borders with them. Or do we? Oh, no, this is us. Oh, this is uh, one of the ones that apprehensive because we've had a couple of accidental fights with them. And there, I think they're just uh, can't share in a border. But these guys we've had accidental fights with because we tried to move into the same territories at the same time. We basically, we've been racing him on trying to get territories going uh, to the west. And he keeps, you know, interfering And we need to do... And I think that's it. Okay, so. Questions? Okay, so there's a battle on Titan's Breath Peaks. Oh, that was the neutrals. So this is what happens. So this is... This is the guy that's apprehensive. That's forces of Jomon. He beats up on the independents going to this Titan's Breath Peaks. Which is, again, over here. Which is technically, you know, closer to our territory than his. Because he's down here. And he's trying to go up here. So, you know, he's, he's trying to, you know, stop us from expanding. That's not acceptable. Oops, sorry. No button. You say oops quite often. Do you need assistance? So anyway, he goes in there. He beats up on the... On the the independence, and then we come in behind in the same turn, and we come in and beat up on him. We lose a couple of units, but he loses a lot more. See that Roger Corman died? Who's Roger Corman? Oh, 
Oh, and this is that's a little grotesque guy. He should be start bringing fire. And there's that's Vukus, I think, throwing fireballs around. Film guy helps so many other people up the ladder. I have no idea who it is. Oh, Vukus is flying somewhere. Here is Vukus causing trouble with the knights. Oh yeah, and we have a devil fighting with us. Somewhere. Where'd fruit girls go? over here picking on somebody with our devil. So this is our summon devil. Looks like he might be a little hurt. He could shoot your healing full crows. We should inject her a lot of low budget movies. One was Death Race 2000. Oh. Death Race 2000. Will these guys make it? Will Vukos get him? Get him. Oh, Vukos, you went after the wrong one. You're supposed to go after this guy over here. He's going to get away now. Or not. Go devil. Someone who's still over here? So how much friendly fire did we have? I don't know. But anyway, so... Again, try to take our stuff. Oh, and this is a Japanese uh, nation. Sorry, Japanese-inspired nation. It's a series of Edgar Allan Poe movies in the 60s, which he did, amongst lots of others. Uh, okay, so a world event has occurred. The heat is unusually severe this summer. Worldwide heat plus one, which we don't really care about because we like the heat. Construction of the castle in Whiteport is completed, and a new famous hero is our queen. Queenie is now famous. Oh, she's this is right. She's extraordinary in size and will have more hit points and strength at the cost of some encumbrance. Any commander entering the hall of fame, blah blah blah. So, basically, is she's um, dined one too many times on virgins, I guess. So anyway. So blood hunting, that stuff. He said to one starting director, if you make this a good movie, you won't have to work for me again. The starting director was Ron Howard. Which movie was it, though? Which movie was it? <laughs> Never from the chat wanted to be a queen? I guess not. Fanny just wanted to be the succubus. He's Dirk Charlie B. in 1978 with the comedy Grand Theft Auto. Oh, is that what space the, game, the game is based off of? I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, so I think we're set. Next turn. Oh, scout. It's okay. I hit the wrong key. Research and construction is completed. So, blood level six is going to be... Next, five or six turns away. Should we work after that? Conjuration. I mean, we don't really care about conjuration, do we? Because we have got we've got really good. Well, yeah, their blood magic is pretty good for summoning. Alteration. Stilling gold. So make gold out of uh, gems. Hmm. 
Now, I think we wanted to do some alteration. Maybe not. Eh, maybe not alteration. It was thaumaturgy. Battle Fury. Castorfield's Hearts of Men with Righteous Fury. A few soldiers get increased morale and attack skill. That'd be a good, nice little buff. Sleep, Rage, Augury, don't care. What is it? Enchantment is the. Uh, like the heels and stuff, right? There's an Venom Arrows, as we wanted that. Regeneration. Okay, so we got most of the good stuff. Heat from Hell. Entire battlefield is struck by heat worse than the hottest deserts. This heat soon renders all units on the battlefield unconscious, after which death is certain. The spell is most effective in warm provinces. Heat clouds, level 1, appear all over the battlefield. It's the legendary enchantment of Asgard. The fortress is surrounded by a ring, a ring wall of enchanted flames. The flames are able to read the intentions of those who approach and will let friends pass safely through. Flying beings that pass over the flames will still be put on fire, but the damage will be less severe than those walking through. Nice defense spell. Eternal Pyre. Huge blazing pyre and yeah, lights up the landscape. It never burns out in the Embers of the pyre will absorb the heat and can be harvested as magical gems imbued with the fiery power of the pyre. It causes the temperature to rise into unfavorable, unbearable levels in the province where it is cast. Once the eternal pyre has started burning, it will be impossible to extinguish without the use of magic. Even putting it underwater, <laughs> it only reduces its heat a little. It generates 20 fire gems per each month, increases temperature, and dispels all darkness in the province where it is cast. Hmm. That's a good one. So, I think we'll work on enchantment next. Yeah, well, yeah, sure. Guess we'll focus that. A person once gave Roger Corman a script, and he threw it back saying, You fool, this will cost me $7 million to make. It was a script for Waterworld. Ah, <laughs> uh, Waterworld. Ended up costing way more than that, didn't it? Mixtel has cast Bind Spine Devil. Where is Devil? Where is this? Oh, Whiteport. We're just upping our defenses here. There's a little spine devil. So it's got two venomous claws. It's a poison barbs. Eight. Dark vision. Demon. Kill stuff. Hmm. Might be better just to mix them in with... Can he command this guy? No, he can't. It's got to be. It's a magic one. Yeah, it's a magic creature. Who ended up making it spend about one hundred seventy-five million? Yeah, I remember it was a. It was a. What's the word? Boondoggle. These are men at arms. We're gonna put you as bodyguards. Ah, here's our crossbows wearing plate mail. Or, I guess, well, it's not really plate mail, it's plate cuirass, so... Breastplate, right? Better defenses than our crossbowmen. That's why we recruit them. Garmin would have kept it in budget as well. Yeah, sure he would have. <laughs> it would have been filmed in a pool. 
in his backyard. <laughs> uh. Oh, in your job. Uh, hold an attack. Oh, he can fly. Good. Maybe we should summon some more. It's a ritual spell. It's a spine devil. That's the one he just got. We do have act okay, so we do have slaves to, to pick on, I guess. Bind serpent fiends. These are several blood slaves to contact uh, serpent fiends. Serpent fiends are bat winged, serpent like demons summoned from bottom of the abyss. Their bite is highly venomous. Get three of them. I can do a fiend. I'll find a fiend of darkness. Fiends of darkness are coal black demons summoned from the abyss. They fight with venomous claws and have bat like wings. Fiends of darkness are able to hide in the night and are stealthy. It's a spine devil. Venomous claws. Yeah, let's get a fiend. And we're just reinforcing our little fort here. Regular crossbows, because again, 10 gold, 23 resources, versus 12 gold and 8 resources. It's because of the, the armor. The Ring Gang Hollywood was the Roger Corman could not only negotiate a contract for a movie in a phone booth, he could film it in the booth, phone booth and finance it with coins from the change tray. Yeah, that's not necessarily a good thing. <laughs> At least I don't think so. Wow, we got some good resources in this town. That on our dominion exposed or expanded over here. So the two spruce forest, 130 units, bear tribe. Militia, light infantry, and heavy units there. Who can we recruit here? Anything good? I didn't even look. Oh, chariots. Oh, centaurs actually. Centaur chariots. They have a spear. They have armor. So you have the charioteer. You have an archer with the bow. And then you have the chariot itself. Which again is a centaur. Well that's different. But there's no regular centaurs though. Forty-five gold, forty-four resources. What would these guys be good at? Because you've got a spear, you got the bow, and a lance. So how does that work? If he charges in, does the archer keep shooting from the from the back? Wonder how that works. Oh, the priest is bringing reinforcements, isn't it? Yep. There's our reinforcements. The priest will never catch us. Um, Hundred and thirty units is I mean we'll win. Or will we? We only have hundred and twelve units. Really, that's all we have? It seems like we have more. Oh, that's right. They have Um 
It's a blood hunting to pick up uh, slaves. She picked up four slaves there. Okay, Mrs. Gimpy needs to talk to me. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. We were contemplating whether she should take Rocket out for a walk now or wait until the evening. And I said, well, it's not the heat of day yet. She's got about an hour or so to go, so this would be a good time to go. Anyway, Fanny the Succubus, the Red Mistress, has found a magical site. So that's uh, the Gateway, Gateward Valley, which is giving us Kills Undead 10, enables recruitment of Centaur Charioteers. So that's where that's coming from. Good job, Fanny. Uh, have not found anything. High enough level, or for certain things, for uh, good blood slaves. There, unexpected event occurred in uh, Dual Anna. Where is that? Back over there. That's what actually happened. There have been signs of some activity of the ancient ruin. At the ancient ruin. It should perhaps be investigated by a mage, otherwise a thrifty adventurer could be sent to explore it. Patrolling troops in the uh, farm have killed 18 filthy brigands. So here. So we're supposed to send a mage here. Why are you patrolling there? Just out of curiosity. Katza. Katza is a. Oh, Sorgina. Sorgina. So, Sorginas are witches. She can go check that place out. She got nothing else to do. Oh, she's got her own little personal entourage of crossbows, too. Anyway, so she'll go explore that. Bow spawns, woodsmen, blowpipes, and vinemen. So 180. 70 there. So I only have 95 troops here. But. Let's go there. These are just crossbows, so you just go there. Bloodless, you can't cast. He doesn't have cavalry, did he? Oh, he does. Okay. Can't be a knight, so he's got the good stuff. Not those kind. These kind. Okay, that. Gory's doing research. I don't remember what we're doing that for. Oh, the crossroad. Crossroad is good for one glamour per turn. So we still have to take these, this whole little peninsula we still have to conquer. Maybe we'll have the garrison guard here take care of these guys. It's 170 heavy cavalry in there. That would be scary, maybe. 
Uh, dependents. We want here. Just curious to see how the chariots do. Probably suck, but. And anyway, defend, 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 blood hunt. Mm. People aren't going to like that too much. Tippy, patrol the province. Who cruels? Fanny, what are you guys going to do? Gora. Gora is a blood bishop. Priest, they're the... Are you wounded? Here, how are you weakened? What happened to you? How did you get weakened? Do I want to build a defensive building here is the question. I don't think so. I think I want to wait until we're like to this forest up here. I'm just curious. It's going to be interesting to see what's in there. Oh, you can preach the teachings of God because Dominion's only at three. Fanny and Vukul what you guys should do. Blood hunt? I don't think Vukul is the best at blood hunting though. Build a lab. Let's build a lab here. Fanny. Yeah, blood hunt. Okay. Next. Ah, uh, our scout, Kemen, way down here. Now Atlantis is up there. Pedo Cliffs. Um, which way? This way or down more? Eh, let's go back this way. Okay, so everybody's movement. much researching. So what are we recruiting stuff? So are we still doing a count count this here? I'm giving up their media control of the house, blah blah blah. Countesses, their mothers and fathers are physically magic the spirit of men I mend, although they're less so than queens themselves. Still don't know why I'm recruiting this one. House of Otherworld Windows. Glamour Gem. Oh, I think we have a laboratory up here so that we can recruit monks and the witches. Serginas are. They're witches. I no longer command the respect or fear of the general populace, and to most people they are just ill-tempered cat ladies who live in the woods and curse people who approach their homes. They are no longer able to fly, but they can still adapt to uh, cat shapes. Dagger. 
Not sure why I would need them. And then the monks, they're priests, they're nothing special. Few of these noble-born monks have any interest in magical research, but they're still able to do it. Hundred and thirty gold for a monk. I don't have an assassin, but we do have oh you know we haven't summoned a succubus yet. Just a regular old succubus. Once Fuku's gets that done, I think. Yeah. We got two blood hunts going on over here. So next turn. Claim the throne of the moon in the name of Mechadin, god of invincible power, god of gods, foremost of the westerners, god of disease, the persuasive one. Another bind fiend. So the fiend. Two venomous claws. Dark power two. This unit is more powerful in total darkness. Suppose. Oh, he's all loaded up. So mixtel, mitzel. Rearmost. How are they getting rearmost? That's unusual. For melee, how are they attacking rearmost? Hmm. And when will we be summoning the greater demon? You mean the demon lord? Oh, not for a long time. We don't even know how to do it yet. And we need a lot of blood slaves. So many blood slaves are needed. Hello Gimpy, it is time to take a break. Go check on the dogs. Just a second. Your next break is in one hour. Okay, this is White Tort defending that. And for to put it in perspective, blood magic. Level 9, bind a demon lord. That's level 9. We're only working on... Level 5. And this was 1,300 research points just for level 5. Well, actually, technically level 6. Sorry, level 6 is 1,300 points. I'm going to guess 7 and 8 are going to be a few more points than that. And 9, you know, the demon lord itself, is going to be a little bit even more. So we're a little while away. We need more uh, priests, is basically what I'm trying to say. But anyway, it's break time. I need to get up, stretch my legs, get some water, that kind of thing. I'll be back in a few minutes. Got to go talk to Mrs. Gimpy and Rocket, see what they're up to. Again, like I said, be back shortly. Enjoy the dog. Yeah, enjoy the dog video.